happy to know you're still there. The program is Breakfast Weekend. And on this segment, we'll be discussing a menace that is widespread in Nigeria. This menace is domestic violence, and like I said, it is widespread. Sadly, it shows no sign of lessening. It could come in different forms. It could be physical, sexual, emotional, or even mental. Another sad fact is that it is not limited to any ethnic, religious, or cultural group. But we won't be discussing this in the abstract today. We have a guest, and our guest is someone is a survivor of domestic violence. She'll be taking us through some of her experiences and how she was able to come out on the other side. She is Ambassador Hilda Ehidia Men Esagbedo. Thank you for joining us on Breakfast Weekend. Thank you so much. I hope I got the name. No, you did, you did. Good morning. Good morning. You were married for twelve years yes, to someone who serially abused you. When did you start seeing the signs after you got married that something was wrong? Well, to be frank, I started seeing the signs even before you got married. I got married. Okay. And um, because I was pregnant, okay, I felt I had to go through, you know, the really? marriage. I felt okay. I'm already pregnant, and I grew up with a single mom. My father died very early, and my mom didn't remarry. And I didn't want my kids to, you know, to, you know, grow up in a single mom setting. So I'm like, well, it's my cross. Let me go into it. And I remember while I was pregnant, uh, we we're coming on from location where we we're in the movie industry. Then it still is off the screen. So um, it did. It was just nagging and going like that. I just got down from the location bus, and I'm like, the next vehicle should just kill me. I was still pregnant. You know, I was pregnant. You know, for my first child. So it it has always been there. What was he complaining about? <laughs> Everything. You know, with an abusive man, there's, there's no winning. If you're smiling, you're smiling too much. If you're not smiling, you're frowning. If you're laughing, there's really nothing. This moment goes. You can't predict. His movement you can't predict his thinking you do so you're like what do i do you're like every day you're sitting on the gunpowder so it's it's not a, a pleasant place to be at all but at, the, at that time you didn't know that it was a big deal you just or did you know then i i think it to me it looks now like mm. um men complain sometimes about things yeah was that how it looked to you or did you know that there was something deeper at play i didn't think there was something deeper i just felt I don't, I don't know. I just felt I was alone with the problem. I needed to improve. Mm. I needed to be a better woman. Mm. I needed to be a wife because I wasn't even prepared to be married. Mm. And it wasn't really like a marriage marriage, like, you know, like family meeting family. We just went to the registry because mm. in my place, I come from a do state, you don't pay dowry on a woman that's pregnant. Mm. So we're like, let's just go to the registry and just, so it was just me and a couple of friends. We just walked in there. So it, the whole thing wasn't like a marriage kind of Proper. thing. And I wasn't even ready. You know, but I just got pregnant. I'm like, okay, let me just go. And then when it was complaining, I just felt maybe I just needed to work on myself. It was later that I knew that, man, this is a big deal. How long but did it take for you to? I want to know how long it took you to realize this is the problem, that and it wasn't you. How long did it take you to realize that? Recently, you won't believe it. Wow. Well, <laughs> after recently, the marriage? Yes, after I got married to someone else, and mm. the abuse continued. Even when I left him and I was still doing my, I started my NGO stuff, I still sometimes I'll be like, maybe it was me. Yeah. It's not something you get over. So when, you know, the woman kept calling me, you know. The new wife, wife his yeah, new wife. Yeah. Um, Gozi, well, she has left with two children. <laughs> and the whole thing continued. I'm like, oh my, so it wasn't even me. Yeah. You won't believe it until recently that I felt, okay, I felt this release, you know, yeah. from the guilt of not making a marriage work. After you know she left so it's, it's a big deal it, uh, i'm sure uh, i keep telling people and they don't believe it some people do if an abusive man gets married to an angel he's still going to be abusive to the angel mm -hmm. there's nothing you do to please them you can't please an abusive man now when it comes to that specific abuse we know that there's kind of like a cycle mm -hmm. that they talk about in abstract. Could you give us like a practical example of how it happens, then they come, but the general belief is that, okay, the person comes back, says, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. and it goes on again. Could you give us like a practical example of some of what you experienced? It's a cycle. I can't really come out to say this example. There are so many, 12 years of my life. <laughs> I don't know how to put it because when you, well, in his own case, it was more of sex. Okay. I discovered later that it was 
a sexual addict. So if I don't give in, it was a problem. And then if I was seeing my period, it was a problem. You know, I remember one time that he actually was punching me for seeing my period. <laughs> Why would you see your period, you know? So, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say because it wasn't cooking, it wasn't keeping the house clean, it was more of, you know, that was his own. So every other thing that he was complaining about would be as a result of not getting the sex. The sex. So that was his own trigger. Yeah, that was his own trigger. In that time, in the 12 year period, mm -hmm. family and friends, um, did you open up to anyone? How did they come in? Um, what a lot of people do not know is uh, abusive men tend to take their victims away from their family and friends and make sure you don't have any contact with them. They try to force you out of it or subdue you out of having any relationship with them so you don't complain. So I, would, I didn't have friends, I didn't, my family, I didn't tell them about it. It was after I left that they knew why I left. I couldn't, um, I mean, why, why would I start? You know but what, they would have noticed some changes. They didn't, they were not coming. It wasn't allowing them to come to the house. And I made it look like it wasn't my you. husband, that it was me. Thank you. So why would anybody bother to come and visit me when I wasn't receptive? So they were not coming. They didn't notice anything. We would go out, I would, I, I, like I said earlier, we in the movie industry. I'll be acting my thing and doing my thing. Nobody would know. Go out and smile and look all good and all that. So a lot of women that have been abused are very good actresses, natural actresses. I, I know that in the movie industry, there's mm -hmm. been a couple of women at present now yeah. who, I mean recently, mm -hmm. who came out to say that their husbands were abusive at some point. Mm -hmm. And I know that at least it looks like there was a level of support among their fellow actresses. Yes, yes. Did you get something like that at that time? No, when I was in the movie industry, it was years ago. Okay. We're not, it wasn't as you know elaborate as it is now. Okay. So of course I didn't talk about that. It was few producers that noticed. Because when I was in, other people said, this guy would call and be screaming. You know, this is someone that is in the industry that should know better. Mm -hmm. I would be like, where is she? How long are you keeping her? Blah, blah, blah. So it was his own subtle way of depriving me of work. So producers were not calling, calling me anymore. anymore. So I, I was out of the industry. So there was nothing like calling, um, like what is happening now, because I was not really like allowed to be in the industry by him. So that was what. So, at what point did you feel like, okay, this is something that you said you didn't even know it was serious? Mm, initially. At what point did you know that okay, this is an issue that I feel is 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 something I may not be able to deal with? At what point did you come to that realization? When my kids started growing up. When my son started telling me to go sleep with daddy so that we could sleep in the night, I looked at my son and I'm like, my daughter was free because, well, he loved her and you know, all that. But for my son, then I think he was four, to be telling me, mommy, go sleep with daddy, I never discussed it with him. For him to have known at that age, I started talking to myself, I'm like, wait, what am I putting this boy through? Then, another time when my son was like 12 and wanted to fight the father, you know, because I took, I, I was suicidal, there was a time I took him, um, that day I took him, um, fuel. <laughs> so I was throwing up and this man was still shouting at me, throwing up, and the boy couldn't hold it again. He was shouting, look at what you did to my mommy. He was shaking, about to, you know. So the next day, and you know these people are cowards. Mm. You see men are cowards. It was, I saw fear in him. Despite the fact that I was throwing up, I still looked up. And I remember I saw fear, you know, in him. And I'm like, God, so this guy can be scared. <laughs> the next day was like, do you know your son actually, my son, mm. actually would have fought me, wanted to fight me? I said, no, he wouldn't fight you, we will beat you up. Mm. You think it's every time somebody would want to sit down watch you be the you know, continue doing this to the mother. No, but can you stand it if somebody is doing this to your mom? So all those times I'm like, what am I putting myself through? So that's when I, I started thinking about it. Normally when we talk about abusive marriages mm -hmm. and abusive arrangements, they normally say that um, there are few spots or dots of normalcy. Okay, so he abuses the woman or the woman abuses the man today mm. 
and then maybe like another two days everything is fine everything is all smooth and lovey dovey yeah. and then all of a sudden it happens again does did, did it happen like of that course, as well that's their part i know like i said you know i, I mentioned it earlier on i said you wouldn't know what makes him what triggers the whole thing whether if you laugh or you smile and all that too and then yeah they do love it love it to confuse you these men are just crazy they need help people don't know that's why a lot of people just look at ah, why is she still there why is she not there? Because today is lovely, lovely, is buying gift for her, and tomorrow is something else. You know, so, man, it's it's crazy. I'm also it's, aware it's that crazy. at that time, I mean, we're talking about how many years ago now, mm -hmm. at that time, there weren't enough advocacy yes. for domestic violence mm -hmm. as much as it is now. In fact, I think the only thing people talked about, about people who leave their marriages is, you're going to be alone for the rest of your life. The man may even win the yes, children over. Yes, yes. So what was the, what was, what motivated you to say, I'm going to leave and you left? My children, especially my son. How were you sure that they were going to come with you? I knew I was going to steal them. <laughs> I knew I was going, ah, was I going to leave my kids? No, I wasn't. And then there's another thing that people, that women that are abused do, if you ask a lot of them, they leave and come back. So in the course of the 12 years, I must have left like seven, eight times, if yeah. not more. Mm -hmm. You know, you leave and the man comes begging. You need to see my ex-husband begging me to come back with tears and, you know, that kind of cries that Kata will be running <laughs> off the nose. I'm telling you, there was a time I took him, when I, when I got stronger, when I left him, I took him to this, um, I, don't, I don't want to call their name, you know, they are doing the stuff and all that. And then when my case was called, this man kept, he didn't even talk. Mm. He knelt down and kept quiet, uh, you know, kept crying. And the women, they know women with our sentiments. They're like, ah, forgive Madam, we've never seen this kind of a thing before. Mm. So forgive him. Go, I said, you go live with him. <laughs> Those are the days that I used to beg, you know, listen to all this. So they don't allow, I don't know why, if you say, because what they do is they strip the women, the women of their self-worth. They call her all sorts of names and all that. And why not allow her go if she's not good enough? Mm -hmm. But they don't even allow the women to go. I left repeatedly and kept. But the final straw was that you know that time when he, when my son, yeah, I think that was oh, the when my son, you know, wanted. And then I started my NGO by the side, mm -hmm. okay. talking to women while I was still there, mm -hmm. and then that was helping me to heal. So I'm like, I don't need to be here. I was much more than that. I started realizing myself. Absolutely. When you were going to leave, fi um, finally, at that point I were talking about, mm. how were you financially? Because I know one of the reasons most some women stay is because they're most not, women. Yes, they are not financially. independent yeah. financially. They mm. have to depend on them for money and. And you know, you were not able to get um, um, roles anymore because no, of I wasn't this. Working. So how were you able to cope? <laughs> I I didn't have anything. I just left. And went to where? came to Ibadan. You knew someone in Ibadan then? Nobody. The story is so funny. Mm. I met a lady one went. I lost my kid sister. Okay. My good friend. And I couldn't stay because she would come from school, stay in the house. I couldn't do what it was. So he suggested go to Port Harcourt and stay with my one of my, his only sister I knew. And that was the first time I was meeting the sister. You know, I told you guys, there was nothing like family stuff. Mm -hmm. So I went there, met the lady, but I was still planning. I had my plans to leave. Because there was a time I actually talked to him. I'm like, this is not working. Let's leave. That guy gave me some punchy stuff. Where are you going to? What did you say? You want to leave? No, I'm not leaving anymore. So mm. I felt I just knew there was no talking to him. I had to leave. So coming back from Portacourt, going to Lagos, you know, we were talking about how expensive Portacourt was, blah, blah, blah. And then there's this lady that was talking about a bad one, but it's so cheap. I live in a duplex, blah, blah, blah. So I got down for refreshment. I walked up to her. I'm like, please, I need help. Help me with these two children. I I need to stay. Help me. Can you help me? She said yes, you would. And then I found that I, you know, I remember that day I was frying plantain. This man left. I just bundled my children. We passed through the back bush. We shall wow. find our way. And I called this lady. I'm on the way. She said, "Keep coming. Good. It's rubbish. Blah blah blah." By the time we got to Ibado, the lady wasn't picking her calls anymore. Oh, two God. children. I had seven hundred naira. Mm -hmm. I was two thousand and one. No, no, two thousand and one. No, my son was locked up. 2007. She wasn't picking her calls anymore. No way, I didn't know anybody. I just called the taxi. I said, Oh, God, 
take me to the government house because I'm I don't know what to do. So I just started going around begging, honestly. Graduate, Nollywood, whatever. I'll pick my children, go to Mr. Nimes um each is beg. I was actually begging. I did that for a while. He came again to Ibadan, settled with me. I said, okay, let me How did you know where to find you? Uh, at the point when suffering was <laughs> when the suffering was beyond, you know. You reached out. I had to reach out. No, he was looking for me. My mom, everybody were looking for me. I didn't tell them where I was. And I looked at these children. Ah, let me show I said to hmm. I remained here. It continued here. You know, that was 2007. I didn't even want to 2007. You can imagine. So the whole thing kept going on and on until one day I just got an apartment. The guy gave me the pity. You know, he didn't know about the apartment. Mm. And I was still there suffering. I said, oh, see, let's go. What are you still doing here? I said, just think. Yeah. So that day I cleared the whole place, locked the door. Finally he begged. Later he threatened. And after a while he got used to it. And told me I was going to come back to bed. Mm. Never did. So if you were to give one word to maybe an abused woman watching right now or even an abused man yeah, right but, now mm. on how they can leave mm. an abusive arrangement mm. what's the one thing you say should be at the back of your mind that would keep them going till they go or till they leave such a marriage one thing mm -hmm. one thing okay what are the things you say well first i'll say life because you can't be a mother or a father to your children if you're not alive a lot of women stayed back and you know what happened to them. They left in the coffin. So life and don't wait till everything is okay. I didn't have any money, like I said, I had just seven hundred there. Although I had someone that was supposed to, but the person did it and I still you know, I you don't have to wait till everything is okay. Don't wait till you have a job, don't wait till just leave. Find friends or support, whatever, but you just have to leave. It doesn't get better, it gets worse. Thank you so much, Mrs. You. Am Ambassador, <laughs> Ambassador Hilda Aidia yeah. Menes Sangwedo. It's been amazing, and we wish you even more. Uh, by the way, the last time I saw you, Sangwedo was not your name. <laughs> <laughs> That's my father's name, the comp compound name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you consider getting remarried? Do you of ever think about course, it? Of course, of course. Are you seeing someone? There. I'm not seeing someone yet. I'm waiting for them to <laughs> Very nice it's one. It's my financial pro. So if you're watching and you know them good thing, you know, just give me a call. Mm. All right. Thank you so much once again Thank for being on the show. Thank you. All right. We'll take another break now. And the last segment will be coming right up. Stay with us.